Hello guys, welcome back to Sand VFX. Today in this lesson we're going to be looking at creating a simple particle explosion in 3ds Max. We'll be using a simple particle flow setup and then we'll render it using Krakatoa. So here is the example. Uh, actually this effect was inspired by the movie The Smurfs 2, if you guys have watched that. Uh, even though it's not that detailed like in the movie but still it gets to somewhat kind of like that so it's uh, really simple we can just create a simple particle flow setup and we'll render it using Krakatoa and later on we'll go into After Effects and add some glows and some blurs for the backgrounds and so so let's uh, get started uh, let me open up my particle view. We can do it either by going to particle system and particle PF source, create one, and go to particle view. Uh, you can do this way, or you can just press the six key to get this particle view. And from there, also, you can drag a standard flow and start creating. But if we have already created one, so let us begin up. First of all, let me just set it to the center of the world, zero, zero okay and then let me go to birth and since the explosion happens in just one frame we're gonna stop our emit at one okay so we have all our particles at single frame okay and amount I think 200 will be fine because we'll be spawning it later on as well okay now for the position icon we're gonna set it to a pivot so that all the particles emit from the center you can see that all the particles are only coming out from the center we'll go to speed and change speed is fine let me reverse it and I think speed will be fine if it's not fine later on we can change that but I'm gonna increase the variation a little bit uh, maybe we need a little more of a variation and first of all let me go ahead with uh, diversions somewhere around 50 or something like that and also I'm gonna increase my variation a little more so that we get some particles up and some particles down maybe something like that it's good we can always come back and check for those settings again okay uh, maybe a little more okay that's good and we won't be needing any rotation or this shape okay now once that we have done that uh, our particles are flying up forever so we need to pull it down with some kind of force so we'll be using our gravity so let's go ahead and create our gravity from space warps forces and gravity okay but I don't want this to be too strength uh, first of all let me add my gravity into a force operator uh, let me make a little more room here okay and drag out a force operator okay by list it's okay I need to turn everything on okay gravity okay now I can see that my particles are starting to fall down immediately uh, I also don't want that much strength so let me go ahead to gravity and reduce my strength to 0 0.1 okay let's see how it looks okay it's good okay it's looking good now let's get back to P flow and next thing we're gonna do is add in a delete operator okay and we want to delete our particles after some time because we don't want our particles to fall down so let me reduce my lifespan to something about 48 49 somewhere like that and increase up my variation not too much just a little bit so that some particles die faster and some particles uh, live a little longer. Okay, it's good, I guess. Okay. Now the next thing is gonna be. Let me go to display and set it to just uh, dots. Okay, or maybe anything else or line, whatever we like. Okay, let's go to dot, and also set my color to something like red. Okay, uh, dots are too small, so let me get back to ticks again. Okay, now next thing I'm gonna do is spawn my particles so that we have got we can get the 
particles trails like that so let's go ahead to spawn and add in a spawn okay and by travel distance okay I, I'm gonna reduce my tip size to maybe 0 0.6 but it's gonna okay and let me get down here inherited to maybe 0 0.5 so that we get these particles inheriting effect like this okay okay let me turn off this uh, force for a while turn off so that we can see okay they are following up and also let me go to PF source and reduce my vapor count to maybe 10% so that our, we can work a little faster or maybe 5% okay okay you can see they are following our particles right like And we gotta go to spawn again. Let's see if we can have something. Okay, we need some variations as well. So maybe a little bit of variation, not too much. Maybe 39, that'll be fine. Okay, up, oh, sorry. I don't want the variation on the offsprings, I want the variation on this inheritance. Okay, maybe about 39. And I want a little more divergence. So okay. Okay, we'll get to that divergence later. So let me turn on my force again. Okay. So now if you see our particles are starting to fall down. Okay. This is not what we want. So for that, to fix that, we're going to add in a display node. Uh, let's see further display node. Okay, here we have. Let me drag out our display and let me link my spawn to this new event. Okay. Now let us see okay now you can see that they are again now following our particles correctly okay <coughs> now let me name this event okay first right here rename it to explosion okay now we're gonna add in our delete operator to our new event uh, right there okay delete and by particle is and this one's gonna last little less than previous one so maybe at 16 or 17 something like that okay that's fine okay that's good okay and variations of 10 will be fine okay let's just go back to spawn again and add in some divisions okay also some variation Oh, let's get back right there. Okay, now let me increase my viewport count back again to 50%. Okay, and this time for this uh, new event, well, for the spawn particles, I'm gonna set it to dots so that I can see the dots right there. Okay. Okay, now let us go to spawn again and bump my diversion a little bit and also reduce my variation and inherited I want to increase it a little more let's say about four okay that's looking good okay now they are spread a little bit out maybe let me say that to five and variation maybe around 39 or 40 okay that looks good okay that's looking good okay by this way we created this cool explosion okay some particles are falling down and like that and they are dying after some time okay that's good now uh, now let us move to create our shock wave for this particle explosion and I think the speed is pretty good let us uh, do a quick play okay the speed is good we can uh, increase the speed in after effects later on so we'll do some time remapping also okay now for the sock wave let me just select all these and let me press the shift key and drag it so that I can duplicate this one okay just copy not uh, instance and let me zoom in a bit okay okay now let me go to explosion and rename this to shock wave okay birth I think that will be fine and also let me turn off this explosion for a while okay so that we don't see any 
okay we only see these new particles and we got to link this pawn to this new event as well okay the same thing now what we're gonna do is change from the speed along icon arrow to icon center out okay and oh sorry I think we need to go to icon arrow out see and turn off the reverse okay it's not working okay I can arrow out and let's go to position icon and change it to volume okay now you can see that particles are moving in all the direction now let me turn off this force for a while okay but I think it's still not happening okay it's uh, we don't need this force operator right here okay and let's go to speed and reduce my variation oh sorry divergence so that we get all our particles moving only in the floors okay, so that we don't have some particles up and some particles down so you can see this <coughs> we can change some uh, let's go to spawn and get down here divergence let us reduce the divergence a little less and so that we get a little bit of variations for our floor shock waves Okay. and for the speed let me reduce the variation as well okay and I can I maybe increase the speed a little bit let's say 310 or something like that okay until it will be fine that's good uh, let us see okay that's look good now let us turn on our explosion as well click this button right here and now let me change the color for our shockwave so that we can see that better and some like blue okay now let's see okay boom Okay, we do have our explosions and our shockwave as well. And it was really a simple setup. There is nothing too complicated, not too much links. Just a quick spawn and to a new event just with a delete operator. And it's a really pretty simple setup. And we can get really a cool result. Okay, that's looking good. So the next thing is going to be rendering our particles and let's uh, go right here create our light as standard and target spot from front view I'm gonna drag it out okay let's see if we have all our particles in there okay we have so no problem at all okay let me also just that okay now let us go to Krakatoa, bring Krakatoa to front and yes I will switch it to my default renderer and we're not gonna do too much just a quick rendering go to global render value and override my color and set it to something like this blue color right here okay and I'm gonna get down and turn on my force addictive mode and let me hit render once to see how it looks okay it's already looking good you can see it's uh, really looking good and let me go to some other frames okay somewhere like around here okay uh, okay <coughs> it's uh... we don't need to play on too much so let me just enable my motion blur a little bit and motion blur to 360 and particle segments 4 let me render it out again Okay, that's fine. And let's get down here. Let's go to final pan density and reduce it to two. And render. Okay, maybe a little more. Four and reduce this density exponent to negative two. Render. Uh, two less. Okay, let me set it to negative one only. I think that will be fine. Okay, it's good. Now we can just uh, render out these particles, but in order to render, what I suggest is first use this turn off the shock wave and render this as a separate pass, this explosion only, and again turn on this shock wave, turn off this explosion, and render this one as a separate pass so that we can composite it into After Effects easily. So we'll just go into our render setup and 
select our time range select our desired size and render output path and then you can just hit render okay so set uh, these two particle system or these two uh, event as a separate pass and then we kill composite it into after effects okay so we're here in after effect uh, let me load up my render files okay crooked tower rendering particle explosions and okay let me first click this one and open in a sequence and drag it to the create a new comp okay this one's for the explosion pass and let me again get down and I have this sock wave as well okay for sock wave just set it the first one open and I'll drag it up okay this one's for the sock wave and okay now what I can do is change my mode to add for the second one so that we can see both the particles together okay okay they are really small okay, okay now what we can do is just select both of these and control shift C to create a new composition or pre-compose them okay and let's go back here and let me duplicate this by pressing the country control D and let me go to the bottom one and add in a fast blur okay and let me increase the blur amount a little bit turn off this top one for a while and something like this maybe okay let me drag it up okay and go to mode and add okay now let me just duplicate this layer a couple of times so we get a nice glow and some blur at these edges as well okay that's already looking good and if you want you can also get rid of this blur and just add in a glow as well but add in a glow okay you can get some really cool glow let me increase the glow radius and glow threshold glow intensity okay you can get some cool result by playing around with this as well but what I prefer is using a fast blur okay that gives us a, gives us a really good result fast blur view amount and set it to add just oops sorry I duplicated the fast blur and duplicate this layer a couple of times to get a nice glow okay that's it and in addition you can also use film effects to add in this some details just use this particle system to create some smokes and render it out as a separate pass and you can composite it to get a little more detailed result as well okay so here's our max file okay so I hope you guys uh, learned something and enjoyed my tutorial you can watch some of more tutorials on Krakatoa, FilmFX and Rayfire on my channel SandVFX so so by this we conclude this tutorial and we'll see you soon so till then have a great time